Hey guys, I'm back today and I have something else really fun to talk to you about. You know, we've been doing all these videos about colorization and using paints and non-toxic items on brass and other things to colorize them up and get a little bit more color in our life, which we all need a lot of that now these days. Um, but one of the most fun things for me is not the big pieces that I do, although they're fun, but the little ones. The little ones are what bring that pop. And you can do beads, you can do small findings, connectors, whatever, and mix them with colorful beads and other things and get a lot of mileage out of them. So what I'd like to do today is to show you this necklace that I'm wearing and give you some suggestions, show you how I do it, and then you're going to take it from there. So before I do that, I would like to remind you to subscribe to our channel because that way you're not going to miss anything because we're going to be really putting a lot of content on here. And if you don't mind, like and leave me a comment. It means a lot to me. So having said that, come on over here and I'm going to show you how to do it. So what I like to do is I like to paint beads. We have all kinds of filigree beads at BeesandBoutiques.com. And there are ways that you can do them and space them out in your work where you don't have to use as many as I do. I tend to charge everything up as like, that's news. <laughs> it's, it's not, everybody knows that. But you don't have to use as many as I do, and you can still have a very pleasant, good-looking effect. Right now, I'm putting color on a pear-shaped bead. And I have it on a toothpick because that holds it pretty good for me. Probably if I jam this down here on here a little bit harder before I had started painting, it would have been better because it's wobbling around a little bit. But what I would do when I'm done with this, and I don't bring one down right now, but what I would normally do is I would get a piece of styrofoam. And then when I'm done painting my beads that are on toothpicks, I'll just take them and right down on the styrofoam and let them dry. You know, and it'll be good. This one's going to need two coats, so that would make it even cooler because that would hold it when I put the second coat on. A lot of times, you know, you got to use two coats, especially if you're doing filigree with Inca Gold. You got to use two coats because you can't put the first coat on too thick, or it gurps into all the little, you know, holes of the filigree and stuff, and it's not a good look. So you have to go kind of light. Two light coats, and you're good. So anyway, I'm going to just set this aside, and I'm not going to worry about if it makes a mess or if it works out. Like I'll fix it later. But as you can see, I had uh, copper, and I had purple here, and then I had this Kermit green. My, actually, they call it jade. <laughs> <laughs> but it's beautiful, you know. And I should have brought down the china plate that had the three, you know, different ones. So, like, if you're going to get china to do yours, I would advise you get the one that has the sections in it. Or if you can get those little painter's palettes, that's even better. Because you, you really need to use some um, water a lot of times with your Inca Gold. But another thing I wanted to tell you really quick. Somebody said to me the other day, um, you know, oh, I have Inca Gold and it all dried up and I can't do anything with it. Well, let me tell you something. You know, we got together <coughs> last week and um, i got to get this off me without painting myself. Um, we got together last week and it was great. You know, we painted up a bunch of stuff and it was lots of fun. Um, and then I let the paint dry out. And I thought, okay, let's just see how dry this stuff can get. It was dry as a bone. So I put water over the different little bits of dried stuff because it was in the sectional and I let it sit overnight to soften it. It came right back. So don't ever think your Inca Gold is going to get old in the jar and not going to be able to do anything with it because you can. And like with Gilder's Paste, you got to use the different mineral spirits and stuff like that. Break it all up and do all this stuff. And that's stinky and not good for you. It's noxious. This is water. So hey, choose products that are water-based if you can and make it work. Anyway, so as you can see, I like to do beads. The little tiny little... Um, you know, elements in the work. So here's a necklace that I made. And I know we got a little bit of splash there. I don't know if maybe I can move this out of the way a little bit. Yeah. So I have to there see so go. much of that. Here we go. Here we go. It's on. Yeah, I can see it on. Okay, so what I did is I just took little pieces and I painted them whatever color I wanted. I used ink of gold for all of it. But you know what? Being honest, I love ink of gold. I love me some ink of gold. I just love the texture of it. I love the colors. It's so vibrant and wonderful. However, you could do this with acrylic too. Or paint pens. However you want to do it, you could do it. 
That's what's so great about colorization. There's so many ways to go. But that's why it's also cool to know about all the different products that work and are non-toxic. Because, you know, you have a choice. You run out of one, you can use another. Because some of them will blend together. Some of them you can use right on top of the other. And how are you going to know that? Well, you can watch my videos or you can play. And playing is the best way to learn. Let me tell you what. It is the best way to learn. Always play around with it. Find out what it does. One can of Inca Gold will last you a long, long time. So anyway, as you can see, I did the parts and I just hooked them up. You know, so what did I use on this one? Let me just show you. I have a whole bowl full of them that I made and a bunch of other stuff. In here. Here's another piece. I had originally meant to make earrings from these, which I still could because I have more of them in raw brass. But um, I decided to use for centerpiece. So I had this old double paper clip chain upstairs in my office, and I thought, huh, let me just, you know, hook some up. This took me like 15 minutes to make because the parts were made already. Let me move this up a little more. You can see a little bit better. How's that? I think that's a little bit better. Get a little more light on it. Um, so the parts were made already, and that's the key. When you want to do work with this, you want to have take like a day and paint parts. And you'll just have all kinds of them. And then, of course, you have to seal them. You don't just paint them and then use them. you gotta, you got to seal them. Normally what I do is Krylon Matte Spray Lacquer. If you have another way that you like that won't change the appearance of the bead and will dry nicely, do it, whatever you like. Just find some like satin because it gives a little sheen to it. I wouldn't advise gloss on filigree. It gets a weird look to it. So stay with the matte or the satin and you should be good. But anyway, I used this, and I used some old chain I had. You could use your chain scraps, you know. Then I took my bead like this. This is one of those beads right here, see. And I made myself a pendant, and on top of it, I don't have another one painted, but to show you the piece, it's this piece that I used on top of it. I painted it. That's brass ox. You can paint right over brass ox. And then I used a bead like this, which I painted. And then I use some rhinestone rondelles, which we have a lot of those at the website because it's like my favorite rondelle. Jet black with crystal AB. Oh, baby, does that look good. I love it. It's so rich. I used some little check beads I had laying around, you know, no big deal. But I had so much fun. See, here's all my other pieces that I made. I saved them because I was going to just sell them all, and then I thought... No, Brenda, you need to make something with that. You need to show people what they can do with that. And now's not the time to sell it. You make stuff, right? Right? I'm teaching this stuff. Make some stuff and show it. So here's all the stuff I made. I just had a ball. I used all the colors that I had that were on my plate, and I just had a ball. And I painted, I painted caps like this one, too. I love that cap. That's one of my favorite caps of all time. For a long time, you couldn't even get it. Now they're making it again. We have it at the website. Um, I'm going to show you in another video going forward how that you can do something like this too and not spend quite as much as I did. Because, I mean, the filigree beads, I think for what they are, they're reasonable. But these are made in the United States. They're not cheap Chinese iron. They are rich, low brass made in the United States. And they've been made like this for decades. They're actually a part of vintage history. You will find these very pieces in vintage jewelry. No kidding, you will. So they can tend to cost like a dollar, dollar and a quarter a piece, you know, so it doesn't take long to get a little money wrapped up in that. You might say, well, you know, I can't quite afford that. Well, there are other things you could do. You could add more beads with them, glass beads. Um, you could find some, you know what? Remember how we did the perfect pearls over old junk pearls? You could do that. You could go get some more pearls and add color with pearls and add them in, you know. But anyway, we'll talk about that another day. But anyway, here's all the stuff I did. So you can see, you just choose. Just put them together and choose. If you get too much on a piece like, okay, this one, this looks great. Here, let me just clear that out. That looks great. I love it. But you got a cap, a bead, a cap, a bead. And then you got rhinestone rondelles in there too. I mean, you can get money into this stuff. You might say, well, you know, I didn't think I want to put that much in. You know, if you're making it for yourself, eh, have fun with it. Enjoy it. But if you're making it to sell it, you have to think about those things, right? Anyway, this is what I did. I just used one of these. These are not expensive. 
and then I just put them together very, very simply, very, very easily, like this. Like so. I would do, let's see. Did I bring my little beads down here? No, I didn't. Okay, so let's just do, go with this. These aren't painted yet, but you know, that's a look that's good to, <clears throat> good too. Normally, I would put something down there at the end, but I'm not going to do it right now. So I'm just threading them on to show you how they go together. It's up to you how you put them, because you're the beater, right? You're the designer. You put them however you want. But, I mean, they, they stack up real nice. Easy peasy. Once in a while, you kind of have to look for the hole a little bit, you know, like I just didn't get it. So here it is again. Then I just need another one of these cap things. And then I just have to turn my end. That's it. That's pretty. You could even make earrings by using a cap on one of these. And then maybe use a head pin and dangle a little something at the bottom. Wouldn't that be cool? We're going to do a series of earrings very soon, by the way, too. And you're going to love it. So anyway, that's what I pretty much what I wanted to tell you about doing the small pieces with your acrylics and ink of gold and stuff. Take a day and just go into your zone. Go make a mess. Paint up a bunch of little components that you have. It could be vintage stuff. Like even this chain, I could have added, I could have added color to this chain. That would have been great. You know, just seal it. Just be sure that you seal it. You know, and then, you know, go for it. This, this didn't take much time at all, really, once I had the parts made. Okay? Now, there's one more thing that I wanted to address before I take off today. Because I don't want to go too long. Um, someone had said on one of the videos, uh, last couple of videos, whatever, they had said, can't you get those little paint pots? Because I don't know if I want to try this big one of the Inca Gold yet. Well, of course, it's always more economical to buy the bigger one. Because when you buy a little itty bit thing, you pay. You pay more, way more. Okay. But anyway, I talked to the Viva Decor people there in Germany. Okay, I talked to them at length. They told me that they have not made this product and put it in the small little jars for eight years. So if you buy those small little jars from a site and they you know, have the Inca Gold name on them, it's one of two things. Okay, it has Inca Gold name on their labeling. It's old product. Now, you can bring Inca Gold back but I have some over here across the way that I've had for about that long. And I can bring it back and I can still use it. But when I buy stuff and I pay full price, I want to be able to use it now. And I don't have to soak it. You know, I don't want to buy old product. I don't want to sell you old product. Once this stuff gets to the place where it's sitting on the shelf, I'm done with it. If people are not interested anymore, I don't want it drying out. I went through that with Gilder's Paste. So if you see those on sites... That's a great idea. I wish they still did it. It was a great idea, but they don't make them anymore. So if you buy it that way, those people have had the product for a long time. So it's kind of like when you go to the big box and you buy polymer clay on sale, you're taking a chance. It might be kind of tough. Tough stuff, hard, needing a lot of conditioning. If you're into that, it's fine, but you shouldn't pay full price. Okay? So, um, yeah, that's the main thing to remember, you know. And I thought, having you said, well, can't we get some of those little screw caps like the, the um, uh, Perfect Pearls come in and we put some in there and, and just, you know, let them sample them like that. I was like, yeah, we could. However, I would not have legal labeling for them. People do that. But I would not have legal, legal labeling for them. I'm not a huge business, but I'm legit all the way down the line and if you buy product like that and it doesn't have legal labeling on it it can be an issue you may you won't know what's in it you won't know much about it besides what they told you if they told you and it could come back on me this way no it's Inca gold it's their product it's fine I sell nothing that doesn't have legal labeling period so that's not going to work. You know, maybe if you're a really good customer of mine and you wanted to try a little bit of something like that and I had some little of those pots, I might stick a little in a, in a pot and say, here, try it. I wouldn't charge you for it. But I can't do that all the time, obviously. Okay? So, yeah, 
if you want fresh product, you have to buy the whole can. But here's the good news, like I told you. Go ahead and use it. It's wonderful stuff. And if you do have it for, for a few years, so long as you seal it tight, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine with it. So, um, and you can always bring it back. So anyway, that's what I have to say to you today. But isn't it pretty? Isn't she lovely? I think she is. She's <laughs> lovely. The only thing I would say design-wise on this, let me sit, just string it this way so you can see a little bit better. How huh? I would have taken and removed this link and put a small bead link here with a rondelle. Maybe two hill beads with a rondelle in the middle. Because I just think it would look better. Pick up the pick up the color a little bit sooner, design wise. And you can see too, I have an asymmetric neckline, which I love doing. I have more of this kind of thing here on this side than I do on this one. Nothing wrong with that. That just makes it interesting. Okay, so that's the way I design. You might want to try it someday. So what do you think? Isn't it time to paint some small pieces? I think so. In fact, I'm going to stay down here and I'm going to paint me a whole bunch more. Yes, I am. And I'm going to make stuff from it too. And then you get to see it. So thanks for tuning in. We will have another video for you in just a few days. So don't forget, subscribe to the Be Super Deeks channel because you don't want to miss any of it. This is good stuff. I've been in this business for 32 years. And I've been knocked around a bit, but that's how you learn. So I love to share with you. So come on over here, subscribe. If you want to give me a like, if you liked it, that would be great. And if you want to leave me a comment, I respond. So just leave me a nice comment, and I will be so thrilled to hear from you. So have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Yay! Yay!